Hey there, I'm Sarah Campbell and I'm a school counselor at Boise High. I'm Angel Robison. I'm a school counselor at Hillside Junior High. We're here to talk a little bit about mental health supports and suicide prevention month in the Boise School District. And also to bring you some tips on how to talk with your child about some of these sensitive topics. So one of the things that comes up frequently in our offices and one of the questions that I ask my students a lot is, how much sleep are you getting every night? And oftentimes, it is five, five hours, six hours a night. And when I ask my students, well, how many hours do you think teens should be getting on a regular basis? And when I tell them eight to nine hours, their eyes are just like, what? And so when I explain how much it's gonna impact them on, on a regular basis in terms of energy, mood, irritability, clarity of mind, all of these things that can, you know, can negatively impact them, they, they are just like, wow. Um, and so we talk a lot about what's called sleep hygiene, coming up with some sort of nightly routine, um, winding down every night, making sure they're getting enough exercise and water and they're fueling their bodies. Um, and then just having that routine that is the same essentially every single night. And I would add to that, lack of sleep really has a significant impact on mental health. And we're seeing that over and over again. So tip number two, how to talk to your teen or tween. This is a tricky one. Um, the, the thing that comes to mind first and foremost is listening. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. listening to them. If they do bring something up, that's a, that's a huge win. Um, and research shows that if you can either go for a walk with your child, if you're driving in the car, that is a great place to have conversations with your child where they're, you're not just sitting in front of them. and. Um, that eye contact can be a little bit overwhelming and stressful for our kids. So um, if you can move in one direction at the same time, whether it's on a walk or in a car, you know, sitting side by side on the couch, like those are great opportunities to have meaningful conversations. So I think whether you agree with your child or not, just starting with that listening ear and empathy is a great place to start and really listen to them give them that time to express what they want to express, and then you can come back with whatever you want to provide for them. But just being a good listener is a great place to start. So I know that our tweens and teens are definitely at a place in their lives where they're pulling away from their parents and guardians a bit more. Um, and I really recommend just you know, trying to find 10 or 15 minutes a day at minimum where you can just be in close proximity to your child. So just sit by them. I mean, it could be dinner, but really just being near them, being in their space, sharing space together. And I think that that creates that safe space so that those difficult conversations can happen a little bit more naturally and there's maybe going to be less resistance because they feel like they trust that relationship and that connection to be there. If you're concerned at all about your child, some of the signs to look for are withdrawal from friends or family, lack of interest in things that maybe they were typically interested in in the past. They might have more reckless behavior, taking big risks, maybe increasing drug or alcohol use. You might also see kind of a lower level of like personal hygiene. You know, they might stop caring about their physical appearance. And, and certainly if they're talking about suicide or, you know, talking about feeling like they're a burden on other people and things like that. Also, I can add on to that um, oversleeping, mm -hmm. not sleeping enough, irritability, anger, rage, um, feeling, feeling numb not feeling like there's a purpose. All of these things are warning signs and we definitely encourage you to reach out for additional support if your child is exhibiting any of these signs. So of course, if you or anyone that you know or your child is considering suicide or you have any concerns about that at all, you can always call the suicide hotline at 988 and you can text their hotline as well and they, will answer any questions that you have. You don't have to be sure that um, your person maybe is considering suicide, but if you're worried, it's okay to call and ask questions and they'll support you through that process of figuring out what to do next.